Welcome to day two of our daily reflections in John's Gospel. Throughout the month of November, a member of our staff team or one of our interns will be sharing a reflection on a passage from John's Gospel. Today we're picking up in chapter three where Sam left off yesterday. We're picking up at verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned. And those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. All who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. After this, Jesus and his disciples went into the Judean countryside, and he spent some time there with them and baptised. John was also baptising at Anon near Salem, because water was abundant there. And people kept coming and were being baptised. John, of course, had not yet been thrown in prison. Now a discussion about purification arose between John's disciples and a Jew. They came to John and they said to him, Rabbi, the one who is with you across the Jordan, to whom you testified, here he is baptising and all are going to him. John answered, no one can receive anything except what has been given from heaven. You yourselves are my witnesses that I said, I am not the Messiah, but I have been sent ahead of him. He who has the bride is the bridegroom. The friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him rejoices greatly at the bridegroom's voice. For this reason, my joy has been fulfilled. He must increase, but I must decrease. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's hard to believe that we're only, I think it's about seven weeks now from Christmas and people will begin to go out and buy their decorations, to buy their presents, to get them wrapped and set up. And those things will be documented on social media. Many people will put beautiful pictures of their Christmas tree. Many people will put pictures of the presents under their tree. And on Christmas morning, many parents will share pictures of what Santa has left for the children, or indeed some teenagers will share photos of what Santa has left for them. And the problem, I suppose, with our social media at the moment is that it causes comparison. When we see those pictures, when we see beautiful Christmas trees, when we see gifts, when we see how much Santa has left in some homes, we're invited to compare We're invited to compare ourselves, our homes, our own decorations, our gifts, what Santa has left for us. The American president, Theodore Roosevelt, once said, comparison is the thief of joy. We as Christians should be careful to know that the comparison is the thief of joy. In this passage, uh, particularly the second half of the passage, we see John the Baptist out doing what he does, baptising people, calling people to repentance. And in the same area, Jesus has arrived with his disciples and they're carrying out ministry. They're spending time together, getting to know people around, calling people to repentance and baptising. And John's been doing this for quite some time and to his disciples come to him and they want John to compare himself. They they feel a little bit insecure. They see Jesus carrying out a similar ministry and they're saying to John, John, this this man who you've talked about, he's now doing what you're doing. He's now going around and telling people about God. He's now inviting people to be baptised. And they begin to compare themselves. They invite John to compare his ministry with the ministry of Jesus. As Christians, we need to know actually that our God is above all. That's what John says a little bit later. He says in the end of chapter three, he says that the, the, the one who comes from heaven is above all. We can't compare ourselves like that to Jesus. But we need to remember that comparison 
is the thief of joy. And so John knows that. John knows not to enter into a competition with Jesus. He knows that that's not the purpose. He's not out to uh, run a race with Jesus because he knows Jesus is the Messiah. He is truly the greatest one. And so he says, as he sees Jesus fulfill his ministry, as he sees that Jesus has arrived, he says, my joy has been fulfilled that he is here. I'm not worried about how many people go to him and, instead of coming to me for baptism. I'm not worried about the numbers of people following me. My joy is complete that Jesus is here and people are going to him. And then he says this interesting line that we need to grasp hold of as Christians. He must increase. I must decrease. He must increase and I must decrease. Last week I had the joy of spending some time away at the North Coast. I had some time off and I went to the North Coast and I spent one particular day on the East Strand in Port Rush watching huge waves rolling in to the shore. Waves that I've never seen the like of before. Just massive. And they were incredible watching some surfers out. But there was a, a moment, I suppose, for me of just stillness in watching that. In remembering how great our God is, how vast he is, how he controls everything, how he orders all of creation. Absolutely no one can control the sea but Almighty God. And in that moment, all my striving stopped. I wasn't trying to be anything. I wasn't trying to meet anyone's needs. I wasn't trying to be good at anything. I was just being in the presence of the creator and in that moment he increased my vision of him increased my vision of myself decreased and that's what john invites you and i to uh, in our christian lives to increase our vision of god and to decrease our vision of ourselves not to try and compare ourselves with people around us it's not increasing ourselves above other christians it's not imagining ourselves to be lesser than other Christians, but it's simply this, he must increase. That is, Jesus Christ must increase and I must decrease. And that is where our joy is found. When we see Jesus lifted high, when we see Jesus pointed to as the Messiah, when we see people come to know him as their saviour, that's where we find our joy, a joy that cannot be stolen. Sal encouraged us yesterday to open the door to Jesus and let him in. So what do we do with him when he's here? What do we do with him when we've opened the door and let him into our lives? Well, we share him with people. We increase our vision of him. We make him bigger and higher in our lives than anything else. And we point people to him. That's the purpose of all Christians, to glorify Jesus. He must increase and I must decrease. Throughout these November readings from the Gospel of John, we're gonna be reminded of who Jesus is and reflect on what he did. But I want to just challenge you in light of that, in light of who he is and, and what he does, how incredible he is. I wanna ask you three questions. I want you to reflect on this for yourself. The first is this, where has my faith increased this year? Where has my faith, my vision of God, my trust in him, where has it increased this year? Secondly, where has my service increased? Because that's what John does. He knows who the Messiah is. He believes and he trusts in him. And so he goes out to serve him. Where have we increased in service this year? Where has your service increased this year? And then finally, where have I pointed someone to Jesus? Have you told someone not yet in a relationship with Jesus about him? Have you pointed someone in the direction of Jesus? He must increase. We must decrease. God bless.